and I came to South Carolina. And uh, my wife, uh, Patricia, had gone to school with some of Paul's uh, constituents and uh, uh, from the Tucker Band and uh, introduced me to a couple of the guys. I met Tommy. And then uh, I was working construction, and one day Tommy called me up, you know, and I, I've always been supported, you know, very much as far as, it, you know, by Paul and, and uh, Tommy and um, and George. And I didn't know Pla I, to, I didn't know. Go ahead. He used to come by my house. Probably not had a house in Japan before we moved up to the country. And, uh, well, man, you can just exert this yourself. But, uh, what, this voice of wisdom? But anyway. Anyway, he used to come by the house in town, man, every, every Friday afternoon. I mean, every Friday, if I was home, you know, he would always come by the, close to the weekend in his Volkswagen van with his drums in the back. And I'd give him a pair of new sticks if I had some. <laughs> or he'd leave them on my doorstep. Exactly. Come, I'm, Remember that I'm time I, I took that hardware stuff over there? Yeah, I'd always have I'd open up my front door, my screen door, and there'd be just, you know, whatever, whatever <laughs> I needed that I didn't have that was... Something that I'd worn out or broken the sticks, you know. Paul would. <laughs> and he never would yeah. ask for anything, man. He's, he's one of my best friends in the world. He never asked me for shit. It pissed me off. And I'd take, <laughs> you know, I'd take his stuff over there and puff and round him up some stuff, and we'd leave it on his doorstep or whatever. But he, he'd come by the house, man, every weekend, going to Atlanta, and he'd go down to all the clubs. There's Richards in Atlanta, and all those clubs that were happening. Happened a lot. Mm -hmm. Seventy-one ish, two ish, around two. Well, seventy-two, three. Seven, Seventy-two and three. Three, yeah. 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 Uh, and he, he'd be going to Atlanta, man, knocking on doors. He'd walk in there, man, my name's Artemis, my drum's in the car. <laughs> and he'd go, right? and really, he did, man. And he'd go, go in and bring the drums in. It. And uh, Ronnie Van Zandt asked me, man, he said, uh, he, we were talking, they'd been on the road with us for a while. And uh, we played a lot of days and stuff. And he said, he grins, you know, uh, I'm having troubles with my drummer here. Yeah, because Bob used to get, he was a sweet guy, he just... He's a good know, dude he, and a good player, but, yeah, but the road he, took its toll on Bob. Yeah, he had, really he had trouble dealing with the road, and uh, he said, man, I, I need a drummer. I said, I said, man, <laughs> I don't, I just stopped him, I said, I got a guy, I swear, man, there's a guy that'll be here tomorrow with his drums <laughs> on his back. I said, now what? I said, I'll tell you one thing, I said, just give him a shot, just give the guy a shot, I swear, I think he's exactly what you're looking for. I said, man, this guy is a strong player. He's a man. He's a damn. He's a, you know, I just ran this stuff down. He's nuts. He's crazy He's nuts. as hell. <laughs> He'll fit right in with you guys. You guys are nuts. But see, with but, that, with that support right there. Sure. And then the fact that, that one day I was, I was working construction, and, and Tommy Caldwell called me up, and says, Charlie Daniels is looking for a drummer. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I I got the number and I called Charlie in Nashville. Charlie said, "Meet me in New Orleans at the warehouse, mm -hmm. and I'll audition you." So I I did got my whole thing together and, and drove on down there, put a new clutch in my Volkswagen, <laughs> and, and drove on down there and got there. And, and what had happened was, um, and see, you know, Paul and them had been with Charlie too, and, and he'd he'd heard you know through the grapevine that, that I was a, a carpenter that could play drums. And when is it? We're talking seventy one. We're talking seventy two and three. So yeah. how many how many albums did you guys have out? Three or well, four. One, no, and, no. one, one and a half. One and a half. Yeah. One and a half. Yeah. yeah. We were getting ready to do the second one. Either had just done the second. Oh, yeah. It was okay. About one and a half. So uh, <laughs> I went down there, and Charlie, being to me, he's he's one of the finest cats in the business as far as just you know. My, my say so, um, I went down there and, and the drummer, he had two drummers and the drummer that was going to quit decided not to. Mm -hmm. And um, Ch you know, I went into Charlie's room and I said, Charlie, what's, what's the deal? And he said, well, it's exactly this. He says, I'm in the middle of promoting an album. The drummer that was going to quit didn't quit. If I had to take time out to train, train you and, and work you in, it would really hurt my album sales and really hurt me right now. He says, but I do you know, know of a band that needs a drummer. And he gave me the the, the name for uh, the numbers for Leonard Skinner. Now with with that, and with Paul and everybody else oh, yes. on my side, those guys I met Ronnie and them. And then and that now this is the clincher. Paul invites me to this big jam in Atlanta. Atlanta, that's right. Big jam in Atlanta at the stadium. That's right. And it was like Wet Willie, you know, uh, Marshall Tucker, Leonard Skinner, Allman Brothers, and uh, Grinders. Oh. And, and no, that wasn't. No, that was another. One. That was yeah, another. Was there any name bands? No, there, there was just just those guys. <laughs> so, 
So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, we, I, I was going to follow them down. They were going to drive their bus in, and, and I, I missed the takeoff point anyway. I was just going to follow them down, and, and Paul was going to introduce me to the Skinner boys because this whole thing had started coming together, mm -hmm. and they were, they were, you know, they were calling, and I was calling, and, and uh, because, you know, I'd been given a number to call, so I, I said I was going to check it out to the end. Right. And, uh, so I went on down. And I, I, I hooked up with their bus right into the, the outskirts of Atlanta and just followed them right in. I got right on their butt and drafted them right right down into the stadium, man. I mean, Slip I just streaming slipped, it, slipped it right in. And uh, so got down there, and uh, Ronnie and them guys, all the guys from Skinner, had just been in a treacherous fight out in San Francisco. Had the, the dog do beat out of oh, them. And Ronnie really? had Ronnie like two tall, black man. eyes, and his nose was like, you know, he looked good, that like day. that. Yeah, man, he looked terrible at the gig. I, could, yeah. I never, I felt so sorry for him. He, and, and Billy Powell had a big gash. He's the keyboard player. He had a huge yeah. gash, and it was they were a mess. And uh, so, you know, Paul introduced me to the whole band. And, and me, <laughs> and, me and Ronnie, are, <laughs> me and Ronnie are walking down the, the corridor behind the the stadium there inside the stadium, and Ronnie goes. All right, you know, we got five drummers. You know, we're going to audition all five drummers. We're going to fly them into Jacksonville. We're going to fly in their drums. You know, this big deal. And I says, cool. So on, I think on the strength of, of Paul's backing and, and, and Tommy and, and George and just, Charlie, just Charlie and, and everybody, uh, I got a call three days later from Ed King, who was the uh, original uh, guitar player in the Strawberry player. Alarm Clock. Wow, yeah. He wrote Incense and Peppermints. He also wrote Sweet Home Alabama. Is which, that right? Which the is same the, guy. The tune that got, yeah, Incense and Peppermints, Sweet Home, which got, actually got Skinner. Uh, Freebird wasn't the one that got him rolling. It was Sweet Home was the yeah. hit. Yeah. And, yeah. and Freebird was retroactive. So uh, anyway, Ed called me up and says, come to Atlanta to Alex Cooley's Electric Ballroom, which is the Agora now. And it used to be in the old Georgian Terrace Hotel. It was the ballroom for the Georgia yeah. Terrace. Clark Gable stayed there and all this stuff. So I got, I packed my drums up and drove down there. <laughs> and I'm going, the night before I, I came in to, uh, to Atlanta, you know, and I hooked up with Ed King. And I'd, I'd, I'd never done, I'd, you can edit this out if you want to. Just, but. Okay. I heard so, it. I heard it. Anyway, <laughs> on, the, on the way to Alex Cooley's electric ballroom to audition for Leonard Skinner, right? Yes. On the way there, my bus broke down a block from the gig. So I, 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 I said, man, this is a bummer. I, I, stopped my, I stopped my bus right in the middle of Peachtree, turned on the emergency flashers, opened the thing up, took out all my drums and put them on top of my trap case that had wheels on it, and stacked them up as far as I could get them, and was rolling them down Peachtree, man. And got it, rolled them into the damn thing, you know, and went back and made two trips. And just left my Boy, bus there. I, I, I left Ronnie. my bus I told there. Ronnie, I said, I got a guy that'll bring the drums on his back. back. And that's and, what he did. And I did. Hung by the tongue. Did. Really, man? Because it, it got like vacuum locked. They, or vacuum they something, you know. <laughs> so I got there and, and uh, auditioned with uh, with yeah. Ed and with, uh, what's the other, uh, Leon Wilkinson. Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> that was a great idea. Good idea. <laughs> Wait, we can take the this bass out. player. We can take this out. We okay. have here now Paul Riddle. He's trying to do something real cool. Boy, uh, Paul, if you didn't want him to do the interview, just say so. Man. <laughs> yeah, man. So, uh, as it as it turned out, you know, I, I got the gig, and and just on the basis of a lot of cats, you know, getting okay. behind me. That really and really okay. nobody had really heard me play that much. Right. Really, nobody had really heard me actually get down and play, but. But um, I guess I guess just my my rap or whatever, you know. I, I, they thought, well, this guy's nuts enough. He might be, a, you know, he's hyperactive enough, and they got enough adrenaline pumping. He might be a good drummer. So you know, I worked out, and, and for a year, it it took me, uh, you know, trying to learn structure and stuff. It, for a year, it was hard for me. You had no to, concept of no uh, A A B A and yeah, all that other keep, stuff. You're right. Keep it in context. Yeah, but he sure could play. But uh, you know, I, I, you know, but but for like for about a year, I, I was uh, turning. I, I turned the band around a couple times. You know, I, I, trying to keep my parts or something. If I if I would do a roll, 
you know, like digga 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 bop instead of boop beep bop boom beep, which yeah. is the way in the record or something. The whole band would like <clears throat> turn around and look at me, you know, like oh my god, it's I was jamming, right? You know, and I was a jamming fool. I like I love to jam and do whatever, I, but I got into the structure and it took me about a year to really two things to really learn <clears throat> how to play in proper perspective. Yeah, as far as that group is concerned, and also uh, to see what a great band I was playing with. Mm -hmm. uh, those guys were were everything, and they were called a lot of different things, but they were they were one thing, and they were they were a world class rock and roll band. And uh, I second that. You know, I, I I enjoyed playing. It took me I a year to, to look records, and, and I see still them. Enjoy yeah. those records.